Welcome everyone to Going Through Prey. My name is Triple S and in this video I'll be talking about not the amazing 2007 game and definitely not the terrible 2017 game, but the 2022 movie Prey that is actually a Predator movie just with a different name. I'll be going through what I like and dislike about the movie, how it compares to and fits with other Predator movies, and also bring up anything I find interesting or noteworthy enough to mention. With all that said, let's begin. Wow, what a dick way to wake someone up. I mean, is she such a heavy sleeper that she can't be just told to wake up so she has to be stepped on? I'm no woman, but isn't it a thing that you're supposed to take off your makeup before going to bed? Oh, maybe she'd been drinking the night before and passed out before removing her makeup. That'd explain why she had to be kicked awake. Oh my god, there's a doggo in this film. Oh no, now the whole time I'm going to be worrying about her maybe dying. Also, whilst looking up if Saria was a good boy or a good girl, I discovered someone from Texas has admitted to the website names.org that the name Sari is of Native American origin and means dog. I can't find any other source to back that up, but that would be quite funny if it is indeed true. Hello, my name is Naru and welcome to How to Blunt Your Axe 101. She only just now noticed the deer tracks next to the tree she's been walking to and from, or is it she's just deciding now to track the deer down? So Sarah is just as smart as Caesar, or at least Maurice pre-ALZ-113 from Rise of the Planet of the Apes to understand sign language. Only way you're bringing the deer down with that axe is if you land a lethal blow, Naru. Otherwise it's going to get lodged in the deer's body and it'll just run off with it. No, Sari! Oh, thank God she only got a tail cart. Had me worried for a moment there, movie. I find it a bit odd to have all this extra stuff included with the title reveal. Can't think of any other movie doing this with their title card, saying which company is presenting and also putting the copyright in there as well. Wow, those clouds here at the river look the exact same as when Naru was standing on a cliff looking at the Predator ship. So weird. A big hunt. Wait. What did he just say? A big hunt. Oh, Huns. <laughs> I thought he said something quite different then. Am I the only one who throughout this long take just watched what Sire was doing? Oh, hey, they actually do address the fact that Naru blunted the hell out of her axe. Nice, I like that. I know as a mother, you're supposed to pass on your wisdom to your kids and teach them important lessons, but couldn't you at least try doing it in a less assholey way there, Frush? I mean, just look at the look Naru gives her, like... Wouldn't you have said that in a way that doesn't make me feel like you think I'm an idiot, mother? I appreciate how this movie knows it's the seventh Predator film, if you include the AVP movies, so it doesn't try and redo what the first movie did in barely showing the Predator and making the audience wonder what this thing is that's using the trees and sees via thermal vision. I mean, we're 11 minutes in and already we're showing the Predator. Compare that to Predators, which tries to emulate the atmosphere of the first movie, and it isn't until we're about 39 minutes in that we get our first look at a Predator. And here we have our introduction of a guy I shall from here on be referring to as Mr. Sexist. Pretty much all the guys believe Naru should stay at home and do her womanly duties, but this guy is just on a whole nother level. At least her brother sticks up for her somewhat, saying she should join them, though only because she's good at tracking and with medicine, not because he actually thinks she'd be good in a fight against a lion. That is one big pile of shit and this guy thinks it's from a wolf? Would have had to have been a twilight size level of wolf to make a pile that big. You know, I bet this guy doesn't actually think this is wolf poop. He just wanted to say it to be an asshole to Naru. Was dropping your bow like that really necessary, Naru? Have some respect for your tools. So even though medicine is supposed to be a woman's area of expertise, this guy, who earlier mistook lion poop for wolf poop, thinks he now knows better about what injured poo he here needs compared to Naru. Were all Comanche men actually this sexist back in the 1700s? I have to warn my brother. Well, have fun stumbling around in the dark, getting lost, what we've not been able to see dick all with that torch. Like, there's no way she should be able to track him, right? <laughs> That's what you get for flapping your gums, you dumbass, instead of actually paying attention to what you're supposed to be doing. Oh yeah, she's dead. Or at the very least has brain damage now. At least she managed to wound the lion though. Wow, Tabe. Not going to mention to anyone how narrow had already injured the lion before you faced it. Just gonna take all the credit for the kill for yourself. So I guess she got sad drunk last night and so needed another kick to be woken up. Hang on, that's not her brother kicking her awake. Doesn't look like her mum either. So they have a designated person to go around waking everyone up. But then that begs the question. Who wakes up the waking up person? I do like this part showing us Naru rejecting what she's expected to do, even if it is a little on the nose. Her going against the flow whilst shying away from the passing women, keeping her eyes down as though she's expecting at any moment she'll be stopped and told to join them in wherever it is that they're going, to conform. Damn, Predator's got some massive feet. Must be a pain for him to find shoes in that size. You know, I bet he has a special order. So apparently wolves have such good vision that they can detect even the slightest movement of anything in front of them which explains how the wolf can see where the predator is despite him being cloaked. So apparently Naru attaching some rope to her axe means it no longer has to obey the laws of physics, kind of like Captain America's shield. 
I mean, she barely tugs on the rope and the axe just rockets back into her hand at the speed of light, completely ignoring the effects of gravity. And again, she's just blunted the fuck out of her axe. Get to sharpening again, Narrow. Why does attaching a rope to her axe mean she can now throw it fast enough to actually hit the rabbits? How do those two things correlate at all? I wonder if the spray we see the predators are using here is supposed to be the same type as the one we see the jungle hunter use in the first movie. The city hunter though in the second movie seems to be more of a hands-on predator with the cleaning of his trophies. Ah, why can this predator be cloaked whilst in water without his cloak shorting out, but then predators about 300 years later can't? That's a little odd. Well, ain't it a stroke of luck that she just so recently attached a rope to her axe so that she can use it now to pull herself out of this bog? What a coinky dink. Looks like someone's never played Hunter the Call of the Wild to know not to be upwind of animals. And that'll teach you to not listen to your brother's stories. I bet if you'd let him finish telling you about his bowstring getting wet and ruined instead of pretending to sleep, you might have learned what to do about yours getting covered in mud and then soaked when you washed it in the water. Then maybe you could have avoided this situation of having to restring it as fast as possible before you get mauled to death by a big ass bear. The balls on this predator to take on a bear bare handed and beat it down. Holy shit, what an absolute badass. If only she had a barrel to ride down this river in, then we could have got some random out of place GoPro shots. She not worried about what's happened to her dog? Or does she trust that Sari is smart enough to stay out of trouble and find her way back to her or to home? Because if that were me with my dog, I'd be worried as hell and shouting his name constantly. Oh joy, it's Mr. Sexist and he's here without our bay to control him. This is not going to end well for Naru. And yep, they both get into a fight. And wow, that's both a cheap shot and a broken nose right there. Yeah, not gonna lie. It's incredibly weird to hear this Comanche warrior in 1719 cold pooping taking a squat. It's like this movie's been dubbed over by modern day teenagers or something. I like the Predator's laser starts out in the usual triangle shape before the points separate, spread out across Mr. Sexist's head and torso, and then fill the asshole with arrows. Good riddance. And we get our first look at a mostly uncloaked predator, and I love his skull mask. It's unique and helps to portray both the primitiveness, but also your advanced nature of the predator's tech. Like though his mask is a skull, it still has the technology of previous predator masks we've seen built into it. He uses arrows just like the Comanche, but we discover his are able to lock on to wherever his lasers are pointing. And we later see he also has a metal shield rather than like a futuristic sci-fi energy shield, which actually reminds me of the deployable shields brutes had in the concept stages for Halo 3, but were then cut from the final game. I don't know why the predator's cloaking is freaking out so much during this fight. I mean, I know it glitched out a bit when he got hit by the arrow and when he pulled it out, but shouldn't it now just go back to normal? I hear you there, Wilhelm Scream. Just because you blend into a different screen doesn't make you any less noticeable. You damn Comanche stabbed me in the foot, so I'm just gonna cut both of yours off. See how you like that. Oh, okay, so now the fight's over, his cloaking decides to stop freaking out. So was he just doing it on purpose to give the Comanche guys the advantage of being able to sort of see him then, or what? Oh shit, dude, the shitting dude's still alive. I guess the Predator thought killing a guy popping a squad would be a shitty thing to do. I can only assume the Predator holds off from killing Naru here, because just like not killing someone pooping, it wouldn't be honourable to kill her, what with her being trapped and injured like this. If she hadn't stepped into this trap, her head would definitely be making a fine addition to the Predator's collection right now. Plus, the sudden arrival of the French probably threw the Predator off as well. Jesus Christ, how thick is Naru's skull that she can just take these blows to her head and suffer no brain damage whatsoever? Ah, so this is where Sari ended up. She ran away from the bear and ended up bumping into the French, which isn't any better than getting eaten by a bear in this Englishman's opinion. The mystery of who massacred the buffalo is solved. Turns out it wasn't the predator just going on a killing spree while smoking a stogie, it was the French. The goddamn French. What do you know? This guy sounds a lot like Benicio del Toro was Frankie fucking forefingers in the movie Snatch. What do you know? What do you know? What, what do, do you know? know? Absolutely hilarious that these guys didn't realise they were the actual bait instead of Naro and Tabe out in the open like this with their loud ass horses, definitely drawing the attention of the Predator. Hang on, is that actually Ryan Reynolds? Oh no wait, it's a guy called Troy Mundell. Damn, him and Ryan could be related. Not entirely sure what's up with this black dust filled windstorm. Did the French like start a forest fire of wind or something? Oh, so it's only when Naru gets upset that even the Predator doesn't see her as being particularly threatening that you finally admit her injuring the lion helped you take it down to Abe. He is right though, that she's a lot more observant than he is and the other guys are. Like, how she knew at the start of the movie that if she were to shoot the birds too early, they'd have to cross the river to get to it. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Nice little tasteful callback to the first film right there. Not over the top, nor in your face, very nice. So the Frenchmen throw a net over the Predator and then just, what? Assume that's it? They've won? That the Predator's just going to give up and let himself be captured? 
This guy deserved getting his head stabbed for celebrating too early, I think. Physics seemed to take a small nap there to allow the predator to jump back up onto his feet from lying on his back like that. You damn French tried to net me, so I'm gonna net you. See how you like that. Love these guys trying to reload as fast as they can with the predator standing right there in front of them. You guys are so fucked. What the hell does this guy think he's trying to do charging into the predator like this? I mean, he has a gun in one hand that he isn't using to try and shoot the Predator, unless of course he's already fired it. He had a knife in his other hand though, that would have at least kind of explained his suicidal charge. Oh wait, he did have a knife, just not in his hand when he charged. Yeah, just go ahead and cut off his head there, Predator. There clearly isn't a brain in there. Uh, the reaction the Predator gives after cutting off the guy's head feels a little cheesy and fourth wall breaking for my liking. Okay, that ricochet though is just fucking hilarious and I love it. You damn French are gonna gang up on firing squad me? Then I'm just gonna blow you all the fuck up. See how you like that? Wow, he was just gonna kill Sari? Did she like kill his brother or something? Why not just let the dog go, you sadist? That axe either has a mind of its own and wants to stick itself into all these Frenchmen, or it can read her mind about where she wants it to go when she pulls on its leash. The predator's putting stuff on his wounds at the same time as Naru putting stuff on her wounds. It's almost like the movie's telling us these two are supposed to be pretty similar to each other. Oh my God. She must be really confident that the predator killed the rest of the Frenchmen and that no one will be returning to this camp since she just sat out in the open like this. Oh no, look! A Frenchman the predator didn't kill. Well, at least he's lucky he didn't decide to just immediately shoot her. Actually, how in the hell did Raphael here manage to sneak up on Naru whilst only having one leg? Surely she should have heard him hopping his way into the camp towards her. I think we actually saw when Raphael got his leg chopped off by the thing during the fight with the predator. Such a dangerous piece of tech, you'd think the Predator would recover his ASAP so it couldn't be used against him. Am I the only one who thought he was actually trying to trick Naru by saying the last thing she does is pull back the hammer to make it fire and not tell her you have to actually pull the trigger to make it fire? I'm no doctor, but wouldn't a warm-blooded creature whose blood got that cold die pretty quickly? You know, I actually thought the scene where she got stuck in the mud was going to be the time when she realised the Predator couldn't see her when she's covered head to toe in muck like how Dutch does in the first film. Then that doesn't happen for Naru, and I think they probably did that fake out intentionally, knowing that's what we'd be expecting. And instead of reusing that method of feeling the Predator's heat vision from the first film, it went with Naru discovering a different way, which I think was a good decision. No Predator, don't you dare shoot that dog. Oh, thank God Tabe saves the day. And we get our first look at the Predator's face, and Jesus, he's even more of an ugly motherfucker than all the Predators from the previous movies. Rookie move there from the Predator taking his eyes off of Tabe and lowering his shield. What a noob. God damn, Tabe is like Legolas on steroids using his bow like that at close range, firing his arrows into the Predator then pulling them out and firing them back into him again. Bit of a bitch ass move from the Predator there, realises he's getting his ass kicked so he turns on his cloak to gain an advantage over Tabe, then sneaks up behind him and stabs him in the back. Oh yeah, I guess Sari took off again when Tabe went toe to toe with the Predator and then she found and stood guard over Naru while she slept. Such a good girl. Damn, she moved quick to circle all the way around him and come at him from his left. Good thing he didn't decide to move on from guzzling down that river water. Am I missing something here? People in the past just have thicker skulls than in the modern day. Naru survives smacking her head on a rock and a gun butt whack, and this guy survives a rock to the head with no brain damage whatsoever. Are you just gonna leave the leg cutter thing in the Frenchman, Naru? Why not take it out and use it against the Predator? It'd be super effective. A lot of things had to line up here just right for all this to go Naru's way. The Frenchman waking up and going for the gun, Naru eating the orange flower before the Predator shows up, Predator deciding to show up at all, him not having already been there, watching the Frenchman and Naru and seeing her body turn cold suddenly, thus discovering she has a way to fill his heat vision, and that he decides to kill the Frenchman up close rather than from a distance and approaches him from this angle so that Naru can shoot him easily. Holy hell, okay, so it isn't just the humans who have incredibly thick skulls that this Predator can tank a goddamn bullet to the head. I guess because of the angle, it only just kind of grazes his head. Also again, it's lucky for Naru that the Predator didn't just immediately take the Frenchman's head and leave, and that his mask fell off when she shot him so that she can run off with it. I wonder if she was intending for that to happen, considering how she uses the mask later on, or was hoping her shooting the Predator in the head would just put him down. Another rookie move there, Predator, realising too late he was being led like a lamb to the slaughter. Sorry to the rescue! And then she disappears again. Deus Ex Dogima. I had to go frame by frame here to figure out how the Predator ended up cutting off his own arm, and I discovered it's because the shield didn't open fast enough to actually block the spear, so the Predator had to deflect it and sacrifice his own arm to stop the spear from going into his head. You know, that kind of reminds me of a story I once heard about a beaver chewing its own foot off to survive. Naru's smarter than the beaver, but I guess the Predator isn't. So why does the spear decide to close here? Anyone have any ideas? You do not understand how worried I was we were going to get a Terminator style throw here, which really would have soured things for me. Thank God we didn't. Again, lucky for Naru that the Predator took so long to decide to deploy his shield, giving her enough time to push herself and block it with the rocks. I guess the Predator let go of Naru to deploy his shield, 
probably didn't want to risk doing damage to his other hand, otherwise he could have just held her in place till the shield cut through the stone. Naru ripping one of the Predator's teeth out and stabbing him with it is badass and all, but it just reminds me of when the Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland pulls a pin out and stabs Stain in the eye when they're fighting. Deus Ex Dogima again with Sari reappearing, this time holding Naru's axe. At this point I'm trying to think it's Sari's like some benevolent spirit or something. The Predator here kind of seems like he forgets he still has an arm he could use to grab Naru and pull her off of him. He just flails around like a worm instead. I got worried again here when I thought she was going to start shouting, Come on, kill me, I'm here! That would have been a bit too far of a callback for my liking. Did she remember the distance at which the arrows lock on activated from the last time she saw the Predator use his gun? Lucky for her though that they weren't close together and that the Predator hadn't fiddled with his gun so that it wouldn't follow the laser since, you know, he lost his mask and that just pulling out his gun automatically activated the laser at all. Lucky again that she positioned the mask in the right place for where the Predator would be standing if he stood up out of the swamp. I would have believed this more if instead of being set up widthways, giving a very small area for where the Predator needs to be to get a hit, it had been set up lengthways aiming at the back of the Predator's head. Then no matter how close or far the Predator is from Naru, he'll still get hit so long as he doesn't step to the either side. Recognize the gun? Yep, it's the same one the Predators give to Mike Harrigan in 1997 at the end of Predator 2 as a trophy for him managing to kill the City Hunter. The question now is though, how did those Predators get the gun? And that question might be answered by the fact we see at the end of the cave painting montage three Predator ships arriving at the Comanche settlement. I doubt though they're spoiling for a fight and wanting revenge for their fallen comrade, that's not the Predator way. More like they're arriving to congratulate Naru on being a more successful hunter, and an exchange of gifts might even occur, which is how the gun ends up in the Predator's possession. So, those were all my thoughts on Prey. If you think I missed anything important or interesting, put it in the comment below along with your own thoughts on the movie. My most liked part of the movie goes to, well, I'm actually going to cheat and say two things. The first is an actual scene, and that's the fight between Tabe and the Predator. Though it is quite short, it really shows us how great of a warrior Tabe is, being such a threat that the Predator has to resort to using his cloak to gain an advantage over him. Which actually connects to my second most liked thing, the Predator himself. You really do get a good sense of his personality from how he acts throughout the movie. He uses his wrist blades to match the snakes and wolf's teeth and the wolf's claws, but then decides, you know what, that's too easy. So he decides then to fight a bear barehanded, showing his growing confidence that he thinks he can take on anything. But then we see that he isn't against using whatever he can to turn the fight more to his favour if he starts struggling or looks like he might lose. So just jumping through the trees to make himself harder to hit by the Frenchman's guns and dropping some bombs on them since they decided to gang up on and firing squad him. And I'll mention for a third time him turning on his cloak to get out of Tarbe beating the shit out of him. He was probably riding on a bit of a high after killing so many gun-toting humans that he wasn't really expecting a single human with primitive weapons to be that much of a threat in comparison, and so he underestimated Tabe. Speaking of primitive weapons, I like how the Predator's weapons, while still being technologically sophisticated, match the primitiveness of the weapons used against him. I've already mentioned his claws matching the animal's teeth and claws, but he also uses an arrow launcher, which reminds me of wrist-mounted crossbows, and then his spear analogues to the spears of the Comanche. He uses his net against the French when they net him, and also his leg remover after stepping in their bear traps and he only resorts to using his incredibly dangerous and effective bombs when he's outmatched and being overwhelmed. I feel we also see some levels of immaturity in this Predator. This is apparently his first ever hunt, and his refusal to accept the defeat is blatantly obvious. The jungle hunter of the first movie accepts his fate after being grievously injured, and the city hunter of the second accepts his when he's dangling off a ledge. This Predator, though, suffers wound upon wound upon wound, and yet refuses to give up, even after he loses an arm. Makes me wonder if he even has a self-destruct device to use when he finally does accept that he's been beaten. And my most disliked part of the movie goes to the amount of things that had to go right for Naru in her face up against the Predator. It all just bypassed coincidence and went straight to absurdity. I've already spoken about them so I won't go through them all again but yeah it's nuts and kind of cheapens Naru's victory over the Predator in my opinion. To wrap things up I just want to say it's great to finally have a good Predator movie come out again. I love the first two. I like the first AVP movie. The second one though is crap. I thought Predators was okay, and the Predator had some good moments, but the rest was just terrible. Prey, though, is definitely my third favourite Predator after the first and second, respectively. Yes, it has all the issues which I pointed out, and I'm sure some neckbeards out there are going to get mad that the protagonist is a woman wanting to be a warrior, which is traditionally a male role, and that most of the men in the movie were acting pretty sexist towards Naru, and I bet they'd even say the Predator was particularly sexist, which I don't believe he was at all. But ignoring those morons and the idiot opinions, this movie is great and is a nice breath of fresh air from all the superhero tribe we've been getting shoved in our faces for years now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any advice on what I could do better for the next video, please leave it in a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and follow me on Twitter at Triple S underscore YouTube. I'm also on Odyssey at Triple S colon 83, so follow me on there if that's where you prefer to watch videos. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.
good. Bye.